Good evening, everybody. I greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, this evening, I would like to thank our Pastor Frank and Rita Boysen, along with the Church Council and its members, for this opportunity of sharing God's infallible word with you tonight. I pray that your hearts will be blessed. As you are all aware, we are into the second week of September and uh, second week of spring as well. And spring is actually a fantastic, a great month for me. I love it because when it's springtime, you actually tend to see God's glory in creation a little bit more. I mean, flower buds bloom, animals awaken from their sleep, and the earth actually slowly comes to life again. Yes, uh, farmers and gardeners plant their seeds and the temperatures slowly start to rise from a colder environment to a much warmer and more pleasant environment. Uh, we've been through a fairly cold winter and I pray that spring will be much warmer and we will enjoy the season. Now spring also is the season of new beginnings, new birthing. And tonight, I would like to encourage us as children of God to find this month of new birthing and new beginning and apply it into our lives. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It says all, not some. So yes, beloved, including me, there are times where we falter, we fail, but don't hold on to the negativity and the negatives of life. Let's move ahead. Right, let's see what God's word has to say. Tonight I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Wow, absolutely beautiful. Yes, beloved, God has created us. He's created Jacob, David, Abraham, Joseph, all the great and mighty men in the Bible he's created and believe it or not he has created you and I yes beloved for such a time as this and he says do not fear for I have redeemed you I have summoned you by name you are mine wow he has called us or summoned us by name and he assures that he assures us that we are his yes beloved we are a chosen generation. The Bible says we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. God loves us. God wants to interact with us. God wants to work through us. Verse 2 reads, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Now, beloved, look at this. What an assurance from God. He says, he firstly has created us. Then he says he has called you and I by name. He has redeemed us. He says when you walk through the waters, you will not drown or the waters will not sweep over you. He says, when you walk through the flames, you will not be burned. You will not be harmed. He says, the flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord, your God. Wow, what a protector we have this evening. When the word of God says that God keeps us in the hollow of his palm, he is not joking. He's very serious. Isaiah has just proven it right now. And he also goes on to say that, ah, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One. Of Israel your Savior ladies and gentlemen we have a Savior his name is Jesus Christ just as spring brings about new life new birthing new beginnings as children or as believers of the Most High God we share in that and you may ask how when Jesus Christ died on the cross that was our chance of redemption that was our chance for us to to be reborn that is our new beginning. Yes, beloved, we have life and life more abundantly because of Jesus, death and resurrection. So the moment you are a believer 
and you acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you automatically begin this transition from old to new. For the things of the past have become old and behold, all things have become new. You have a chance to become a new creation. Isaiah chapter 43 again and still at verse 19. I'm just going to jump a few verses. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Beloved, God is doing a new thing. We ought to perceive it. We need to ask God to help us open our spiritual eyes so that we could see the spiritual things. God is making a way where there seems to be no way. And believe it or not, if you do not get onto this wave, if you do not choose this life in Jesus Christ, you will not see it. I pray tonight that God will open our spiritual eyes because yes, he is making a way in the wilderness. He is creating streams in the wasteland. Uh, Pastor Jacha preached uh, two Sundays ago about looking for a sign. You cannot see the sign if your spiritual eyes aren't open. You cannot see those signs if you're not inclined with God and his word. God will not lie. He says, now it springs up. Verse 19, see, I am doing a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in your life. God wants to do a new thing in my life. We need to perceive it. We need to see God's hand move. We need to see God make a way where there seems to be no way. We need to see the streams in the wasteland. God is still at work. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same unchanging Jesus, beloved. I pray that tonight you will catch a glimpse of God's glory. If you have gone astray, I pray that this new month of spring, new beginnings, new birthing, I pray that God will rekindle that fire within you and you start afresh. God planted you now because this is the right time for you to flourish, to blossom, to accomplish dreams, to overcome obstacles and leave your mark. God knew. He created David when the Philistines were attacking and God raised David up in that time for a specific task and he used him in a mighty way. God used Noah in the Bible to build the ark at that time. It was Noah's time. God knows all things and he knows us better than we know ourselves. There are times where we feel discouraged, demoted, but God knows deep down, hey, my son Ashley has potential. And until Ashley catches a wake up, turn to me and focus on me, he will not see that potential. He will not be used to maximum, to the maximum for God's glory. So tonight I pray that you will hold on to Jesus. Turn back to him if you have gone astray. Like I said, let September be this month of new beginning for you and I. New birthing, a fresh anointing. Yes, one of my favorite singers sings this beautiful chorus. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is flowing my way. A season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. I accept that tonight. I embrace this new season. I want to be the best I can be for Jesus. Remember, God has planted you and I now at this specific time because he knew we could handle Corona. He knew that we are strong. Although we may not be in the church, but we are praying at home. We are studying his word at home. God knew, God chose us, predestined and pre-planned and ordained us for such a time of this. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He strategized about who will be the right person for year 2020. God knows what he's doing, beloved. So if you're feeling down and out, I pray that you will catch a glimpse of God's glory right now. 
re-change your mindset, re rethink it. Because God has a plan and a purpose for you and I. We are ordained to be here in 2020. God knows that we are strong. God knows that we are prayer warriors. God knows that we can stand the test of time now. So it's time for you and I to rise to the occasion. Look forward with hope in God, not backwards with regret. There's none of us perfect, no, not one. There are times where we look back at our past. Although God has forgiven us, we look back with regret. We hold on to the past and we cannot move forward. God has forgiven us. But because the devil knows how to play with our minds and make us feel rejected, like we are useless, that's the devil's job. Beloved, don't give him that chance. Let's use September. Let's use spring as a new beginning. You tell Satan, get out. My past will no longer hold me back. I will move ahead. God has appointed me. He has called me for now. He has strategically, strategically positioned me in 2020 because he knows I can stand strong. I can be that plant that is planted by the rivers. Yes, and my roots will go deep down in Christ. And I will not wither. And I will not be blown over by a wind. I love the verse, just like the tree that's planted by the waters. I will not. I will not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the waters. I will not be moved. Yes, beloved. I will not be moved. You will not be moved. Do not live life with regret. When God has forgiven you, embrace it. Allow him to use you. Look forward with hope. People will talk about you, but that doesn't mean they know what they're talking about or what they're saying. That's people's job. That's man's job. Yes, see, Satan will use men to discourage you. Satan will use man to say all manner of evil against you. But when the blood of Jesus has washed you and redeemed you and you become a new creation, beloved, you have nothing to regret. You have, don't worry about man. Yes, I'd rather be right with God and wrong with man and inherit eternal life in heaven than to be in good books with man and be robbed of a chance and an opportunity to get into heaven. Let us look forward to achieving the prize that God has planned for us. Do not be distracted by critics. God has your back. Guard your heart by guarding your thoughts. Don't feed anxiety, worry, regret or frustration. Instead, think on what is good. Think on God's plan for your future. Distance yourself, beloved from the things that keeps bringing you down and let God lift you up. True, beloved, there are times when we allow the world to get the better of us and then we feel like we're sinking. And guess what? Satan enjoys that. He finds pleasure in that. When you feel like you are nothing. But God says, my son, my daughter, look unto me, focus on me, read your Bible. Understand my word and I will bring a fresh anointing your way. This new season will bring us fresh anointing. With the virus slowly going away, I can feel God's presence. Much more now than ever. Because we stood the test of time. As a nation, as a church, as the whole world stands together, the world has seen God's hand move during COVID-19. Those who believe in him held on and continue to pray. I pray that you were one of them. I'd like to close this evening with reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. As I mentioned earlier, Make a, make a commitment to Christ this new month, new beginning, new birthing. Allow Christ, 
Allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through your lives. Let the old be gone. Let the new take over. Let us adopt Christ like nature. Let us walk like Christ. Let us talk like Christ. Let us become the salt of the earth. Let us become the light of the world. We have a great part to play in society. And God is not going to send the dead to come and do his work. He's going to use you and I, the living. In the land of the living, we will see God's hand move. We will see the glory of God. And God has put you and I here on earth at this specific point in time. So with this word, I pray that you are blessed. And may we continue to fulfill the great commission to go out into all the world and share the gospel. Jesus loves you and I tonight. May God bless you. Take care. Till we meet again, stay blessed.